When the Spanish came to Mexico, they started a process of evangelization of the indigenous people that were here. They even brought the, the Inquisition with them, but the Inquisition wasn't really enforced because uh, most of the Christians that were here were new Christians because, well, obviously, they weren't familiar with the Christian God. They were polytheist, they believed in a lot of gods, and this is where the myth of Our Lady of Guadalupe or Virgen de Guadalupe comes to play. Because um, the, the, Virg the Virgen of Guadalupe, Virgin of Guadalupe, is really important in the Mexican culture nowadays. Uh, she is a symbol, she is this really big symbol of the religion. Uh, most people believe only in the Virgin. They don't really pray to God, they pray to the Virgin to ask her favor. They go to the Basilica every day. They, um, there's people that come from other states of the, of the country, from another states, like they do these really long walks called peregrinaciones uh, to go to pay their respects to the symbol that is the Virgin. So the origin of this myth is that in 1531, in the year 1531, in, in this context of the evangelization of indigenous people, um, Obviously, the monks and the friars were really interested in making them convert to Catholicism, to Christianism, or whatever religion that only has one God. Because, as you know, in those religions, in that uh, period of time, to have more than one God was uh, sacrilegious. And because they were coming here as invasors, they have to impose their ideology. So yeah, um, basically what the Spanish did was to demolish all the temples, or the all the images of the of the gods of the people who were here, and to impose their own god. And well, yeah, in that context, in, in supposedly the myth happened in 1531. Uh, the myth says that an indigenous man called Juan Diego uh, was one day uh, walking in the hills and out of nowhere he saw this really beautiful woman with a shining aura around her that was talking to him. He, he came where she was and the, the request that the woman had was very simple. She said to Juan Diego, okay, I am uh, Guadalupe, I am the Virgin of Guadalupe, I am the Mother of God, and I want a temple to be built in my name in the hill of Tepeyac. And obviously this guy uh, told her that uh, he wasn't going to be able to build it because he wasn't having any power in, in there. He was just... Uh, an agriculture. He was just an indigenous man in a country now oppressed by the Spanish. But even though he agreed to go to the friar that was in charge and tell him that he had seen the mother of God, that he had seen her and that she wanted to have a temple in her name. But obviously the man in charge whose name was Juan de Sumarrara, uh, wasn't having it, <laughs> he didn't believe him, so he asked for proof. Obviously Juan Diego didn't have any proof, but he went to the hill where he had seen the, the woman, he went back the next day and told her that, that the man hadn't believed him and that he wanted proof. And because of that, the Virgin said, okay, um, go to this hill that is here where, where we are and take some flowers in your poncho and when you are in front of the friar you give him the flowers you just let him see them 
that's what Juan Diego did. But the, the strange part is that it was, uh, it was winter, so there shouldn't be any flowers around. But the the myth says that when Juan Diego went to the hill, there were a lot of beautiful flowers, all kinds of flowers you can think of, and he took all the flowers he could, put them in his poncho, and he went like that to see the fry again. And when he was in his presence, there the images, yeah, the 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 paintings show a man that shows the other one what is beneath his poncho. But when he was trying to give him the flowers, when he let the flowers fall from him, the image of the Virgin had appeared in his poncho. It was imprinted there and there was no way that could happen. And supposedly that was proof enough for the Fraya to agree to build a temple in the hill of Tepeyac. And actually the temple is still there. You can still go there to pray and there is also a newer temple uh, lower in the hill. There's a, a whole zone that is dedicated to the Virgin of Guadalupe nowadays. And well, the thing is that uh, that is his, that story is so important that the poncho, supposedly the original one, is in a museum. It's also in a museum, it's in Mart, so you can go and see it. And it, it's supposedly the, the image that is in the temple. And well, the, the thing here is that the actual, actual history tells us that the Spanish didn't know about this story until 19, uh, until 16 something, until 100 years later, the story came to be in the actual books. And the thing here is that um, it is thought that the Christians told the indigenous people that the their goddess, one of their goddess, who was called Tonatzin, was actually a Catholic goddess, and that they had to pray to her. Obviously, they changed the story so that she was she wasn't a goddess anymore, but she was the mother of God. But yeah, like um, basically, the Virgin of Guadalupe or Our Lady of Guadalupe is the Mexican version of the Mother of God, and. Obviously, it was uh, the story itself was made by the Spanish to evangel to to continue the process of evangelization of the indigenous in the territory. But it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, uh, this this symbol, this this virgin, has a lot of followers nowadays that every year ago there's there's even a festivity called uh, the day of our lady of guadalupe that there's a big party in the temple not the original one but in the in the whole zone as i said there's another temple bigger uh, newer there is um the the mass that is celebrated that day is different from the one celebrated the other days because uh, it is considered the the, birth, the birthday of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And as it is considered her birthday, the people go there to sing to her, to br bring her flowers, to bring her money, obviously, their diezmo. <laughs> and, well, yeah, the people sing her the mañanitas, they sing her happy birthday, they sing her with mariachi, there's a... There's a really big part, it's a really big symbol because uh, there's always a lot of people there. Even if there's no festivity, even if the the birthday of the Lady of Guadalupe isn't close, there's always, always a lot of people going to see her, to pay her, pay their respects and to show their devotion to her. There's always a lot of people in the whole place, not only in the church or in the smaller temple, there's people in all the place because as it is a whole zone, the people are there waiting for their turn to go in there and be able to see 
the image that is there because the image that is there is supposedly the original poncho where she appeared where she first appeared and i think that's all about her about the myth and about what is nowadays about the reality about everything that surrounds the mexican mother of god